Hello and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to go over a trick on how to toggle on and off your sequence for overlaps. Currently right now when you set it up, it just will stay on the object and it will always be on. But today we're going to make them toggle on and off. And so with that said, let's get started. Alright, so here's our scene setup. And basically the goal of this is for sequence of overlaps to be able to turn on and off depending on where we need it. So for instance, in this setup, we're going to have this object which does not have the sequence of overlaps on it. We want it to be able to go behind this house roof a little bit and not be able to see through. So it's just normal. You would only see the roof. But then you can see that we hit a little key behind this fort thing. And so what we want to do is when the object goes behind this fort thing, we want sequence of overlaps to turn on. And then that way it can give us a little visual cue. And that way you can differentiate areas that are hidden and areas that are not hidden. So I'm just going to move him back out here. And there's a few things that we need to do. So first we're going to go to the objects here. And you can see that I just have a player, just a normal player. And then we're going to add an object. And I'm, this is going to be basically a child object or a connected object. And it's going to be the overlap. It's going to be a on and off switch, basically. Or switcher. Now, we do need to give this an animation. So I'm actually going to just give it the player animation for now. And we're going to update it later. And then the next thing I'm going to do is put it in the neutral group and take off all the restrictions. Now I could easily have this in any other group and take away the restrictions and it would probably work for the most part fine. But the player group is the one that you do not want it in. It's going to affect movements and a, and, and a lot of other stuff. Enemy group, I wouldn't really want it in either because you also do have movements towards enemy groups sometimes and you don't want this object to be associated with any of those at all. So I like to create a neutral group here and we're just going to remove all of these things. All right, so we added the animation, which we'll uh, fix here in a minute. All right, so now in this new one here, we're going to go to the cogwheel. We're going to add sequence of overlaps. Click OK. I have a video on how this works if you want to check that out. Now, the key thing to note is that this only works with the transparency vicinity. It, this doesn't work with the solid color. And I'll explain why in just a uh, once we get going. But we do want it to overlap on all of these things. We don't want the solid color. We want the vicinity. And I'll just do a circle. I'll make it fully transparent, meaning we can see through it all. And then I'll make the size about 48 by 48. All right. Now, the last thing that we need to do here uh, for now, as far as animations go, is we need to make a blank animation. All right. So this vicinity is going over this, this animation of this object. So in the animations tab, we're going to go to player and we're just going to grab one. It doesn't matter. And we're going to, well, we can just drag it right here. And we're just going to call this uh, transparent. And we only need one. And we only need one frame. And I can make it zero here. Call this single. And we're going to get rid of the inputs here because we don't need the inputs. Also take off loop. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it fully transparent. I guess not the last thing. Here's the last thing. We're going to delete the wall detection and the collision detection and the connection point. The reason you're seeing Japanese words is this was a, is, was it one of the example projects? So when you create a project, this, this will all be in English. Matter of fact, if I was to create another one here, if I go to add wall detection, it pops up in English. So because it was created in the Japanese language and then translated or, and then added as a sample for us to download, we're going to have some of those, uh, wording issues or translations right there. Okay. So now that we're back here, we can, uh, put this on transparent now, and now we won't be able to, to see this object, but there is a sprite there. It's transparent, and so therefore sequence of overlaps will work on it. All right, so now let's attach it because this still does nothing unless this is on the scene. Well, we don't want to put this on the scene and make logic to always follow us, so we're going to utilize the parent-child relationship of stick to parent. And we're going to do that by going to the player. We're going to add connected object. And then we're going to add this connected object and it's going to be our overlap on and off switch basically. And we're going to select that object 
we're going to give this a switch eventually because we're going to be able to say whether this object is on or off. If it's on, that means that we have sequence of overlaps. If it's off, then we don't have sequence of overlaps. All right. We're going to center it on the player and make it a child. This is the most important thing right now. And with this setup, we can actually test this. So if we were to go to play and I was to move down, you can see that I can see the player. You can see that we still have the roof showing. I'll show you why here in just a second. But now you can also see that we can see behind and we can't see that uh, key that we put in there. So let's uh, fix a couple of these things. So the first thing is the reason that we can see the house tiles is because they're both on the main and they're on the front. So if we want to not see these when we're on the main, sequence of overlaps doesn't affect anything on the same layer as the player. So since that's the case, all we gotta do is just get rid of them on the main. And now if we were to play test, we can go down and now it's more transparent as normal. All right, so now let's see what's going on with our key here. And the key is in the right, it's on the main here. And it should be showing. So let's see exactly. Let me move it right here and make sure that we can see it just normally. Okay, so it's moving up a little bit. It's kind of out of the way. So let's see exactly what's going on with its logic. All right, so it's just waiting. We have it do a little jump. Okay. I didn't really look at the logic before I put this out there. So let's just see if that looks a little better. All right, there we go. So now we can uh, slide this behind. And it should be there when we go to find it. And there it is. All right, so now you kind of found this little key. I don't have the pickup logic. I'm pretty sure it's looking for a different object. We could check real quick. Uh, distance with other object. Sure, I'll just put the player. Okay, so now we can pick it up. All right, so now how do we turn it on and off? So the first thing that we need to do is give a switch and we'll just call this uh, overlap. And then once we create that switch, we're going to go to here and we're going to say that this object switch needs to be on in order to turn it off. Now, if you want something to remain and stay, you might consider using a common switch for this. But for right now, this works great. We can just use the object switch and go from there. So now that we have to have this overlap on, now when we play test, you can see that we do not have it on just right away. All right, so now how do we turn it on? Well, there's a few different ways that we can do this. One, you can turn it on by just a certain button. So we could have, you know, press Y and now you're looking for things. That doesn't really make sense in this situation. So what we're gonna do is have this based off of area detection. So we're gonna come to the tiles here. And normally I don't do this. Normally I like to make or have a little image of the number that I'm using, but just for tutorial sake and just so that you know that you can do this, I'm gonna do that for this one. So we're gonna make a tile here and we're gonna have it overlapping and we're gonna call it uh, area detection. And we're gonna say that it's an area detection of one. Now this number would totally depend on your project you probably already have number one used, so you would use a different number. We're also gonna make it to where it's only affecting the player group. So only the player group's area detections will be changing when it's overlapping. All right, so now that we have this tile here, we just have to remember where we had it. And then we can go to the scene here. We can go to one of the background layers. So let's see, that looks like the ground. So we're just gonna to go to this one right here that's not used. We're gonna to go to the tile. We're going, to grab, uh, we're going to grab this tile here, and we're going to place it all over here, which is where we can walk behind, all right? So this tile is now all over this area in this background two layer. And since area detection moves from layer to layer, meaning that you can be on the main layer and, it, and this background will still affect what area detection you're on, we can use it for this setup. And then all we have to do is just don't apply it behind here. And now we have an area detection of five over in this area. And uh, I think it would be negative one in, in this area. We can actually test this. We can play test. We can select our object here. 
go to details and we can see that our area detection variable is negative one. So as I move behind the house and stuff, it's still negative one. And then as I move behind the, this area, it turns to one. And then when I move out of that area, it turns to negative one. All right, so now let's start to use that to turn it on and off. What we're going to do is we're going to make another object here. And this is gonna be like uh, area detection uh, manager, you could say, or control. And this one does not need an animation. This one we want neutral and all this other stuff. Make sure if you're in side view project, you're turning gravity off and all that good stuff. Simply go to moving, click zero right here, turns off all those objects that you need just for a quick setup. And now we're just gonna have a basic normal uh, processing node action here. And then that's gonna lead to uh, overlap on. And what's going to lead there is if we got a switch here, if the players, oh, it's a switch, that's right. So if the players overlap switch is on, or sorry, not the overlap switch. <laughs> it was a variable, my bad. So if the player's area detection, that's right. If the area detection is equal to one, that means that it's the area detection where we need to turn it on. Then overlap turns on and we need to, then here's where we turn on the player's overlap switch. All right, so then we turn it on right here. So right here, you would have other things like here's another area detection that could possibly be uh, useful for you to detect. And mainly for things that you need to turn the switch on that you don't want your player to turn on, all right? So we can go like this. For now, this works. And then we'll turn it off in processing. And we'll just turn it off. And then the check out will be if it is not equal to one. So you can either click this or you can leave it at equal and you can just click the gray. I kind of like doing this because then I know that if I have a check of this switch going in, and then if I real quickly just check this and it's gray, that usually means that I just flipped the value right here. So it's a really easy check for me to know that probably the same value, I'm just saying if it's not equal to. All right, so here we go. Our switch is on when we're here and it's off when we're in processing. And all we gotta do is add this into our scene. So I'm going to go to here to the main layer, and I'm gonna add this area detection. I usually add it where this, uh, right by the camera. That way, all my invisible objects, I kinda know. I used to have an image associated with them, and then I would know where they're at, but images can take up performance. So this is actually a better performance way to do it, is by not having an image associated with it. And so since that's the case, I'm just going to have it in an area that I know where they're at, so I can easily just drag over them and it will select them over here, and then I can find which one I need. Kind of in this little red box right here. <laughs> okay, so that's said and done, and we should have now a working system. So if we go to playtest, we can go behind the house, and now we can go behind here, and it turns on. And then as soon as we leave, it turns off, but you can see that it's staying there. Looks like it took a big old bite out of it. All right, so we do got something to fix. And you can see if we go back in, it will turn it on again. We left it for a brief moment because the center in this animation is a little not how I normally would have it. You can see the centers right here. Normally you want the center to be as close to the feet as possible. All right, so yeah, you're gonna want the end of the shadow above this origin here, and you're gonna want the center about where this connection point is, about where the feet are at, because that's gonna be where you want things to trigger. If you were stepping on things with your feet, that's normally where you, that's normally where the character would be, and so you're kind of mimicking that same effect. All right, so while we were on the topic, I figured I'd just show you exactly what I would do in this situation. So you could see that you could floor it, but you can see that that still leaves a big old space between the origin and the end of the shadow, let's just say. 
and I'm going to actually remove things. There we go. That's a whole lot clearer. All right. So what I would do instead with this animation and just to give ideas out there is I would actually set my origin point right here. And I would start to move it on my on my own. So I'm going to move it to center it on that red line. And then I'm going to move it up a little bit. Oops, that's down. And then I would probably get the shadow about right there. All right, so now I want to see the connection point here because the next thing that we need to change is the center because this center is not very accurate. So I would go to these animations. Now with the center, you can only change it one frame at a time. So if you change it on this frame, then you've lost it on this frame. So quite simply, you can just shift click and grab all the frames and then you can place that origin where it should be. So then you can go and see that it's about 47, maybe we could round it up to 48. That looks good. And then I would copy paste this and then I would go to each frame and paste in 48. All right. So this is just normal, you know, workflow, kind of what you got to do. And I would do this for for all of it. And then that way you're going to have an accurate origin, which is going to auto Y sort. And then you're going to have a more accurate center, which is going to be your area detection all right, so the positioning is way off. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, but we had a couple things here. So now it's staying and then you can see that. Yeah, so now there's just a whole path now that we can go. So let's fix that. The thing that we need is and it's really simple. This is just going to be when it's on. And then we need another state when it's off. And the simple check to turn it off is that we need to destroy it or we're or we need to check if the players and we could do parent if we wanted but in this case it's just easier to pick a player right here so if the players overlap switch is off well then that means that we want this child to be off and so in that case we can go to off and quite simply what we're going to do there is destroy it and remember whenever we destroy something we want to make sure none is selected and while I'm here, I'll just unselect some of these other things we don't need. All right, so now we have the destroy logic. So we can go to playtest again. And we can go behind and we see that it pops up and we leave and it goes away. So that's how you can destroy those those childs. It's actually really handy. And so now you can go and find your treasures and anything that could be hiding behind. You can use this in a lot of situations, I feel. And I think it's it's better to have this flexibility versus always having it on. Sometimes the way that tiles work out, it, it actually looks worse if it's on. So there's going to be sometimes you want it on, sometimes you don't. I think in this case, it looked really good. And I think if we went behind the tile, the house right here, I think that there's a possibility it could not look good, especially if we had main layer tiles right here then they would not be disappearing and it would look like a big squares kind of just cut off right here for parts that we can see and parts that we can't see. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. If there's any questions, drop them in comments below steam form or discord. We'll get you figured out. And with that said, we'll see you at the next video.